everybody, welcome to another Squadcast. Ooh. No, you like that? You like I that like song? the melody. <laughs> Anytime I get to sing is a happy day for me, not for you guys that have to listen to it because that could be horrible. Ears could bleed, blood everywhere. No, it was great. Uh, it was great. <laughs> welcome back to the Squadcast. I'm Camille. Joining me as always, we have Caboose, we have Malik and Steve, and we like to deep dive into the topics that is really bothering our community um, or just making us smile and making us happy. And this week, it has a lot to do with sneak peeks of games that are coming out. Mm. Um, so mm -hmm. I'm excited to get into that. But if you're joining us, I want to let you guys know that you could let your thoughts be heard because we're going to be talking about Horizon Zero Dawn, Far Cry 6, Sonic Central, and Dying Light. Two. <laughs> so let us know I wonder what which thought. one you're most excited for, Camille. I <laughs> take a wild guess. We'll we'll have to get into <laughs> yeah. that later. But uh, let us know at home what your thoughts were during those live streams, and let's have a conversation about it right here. Or if there's any clippable moments, well, let us know on Twitter. Post them on Twitter at Squad State, and it'll be a good time. So with after the ado. Let's get into it because I think we have a lot to cover uh, today. So I'm going to start off with Horizon Forbidden West. Now, this is going to be the first PlayStation 5 exclusive that's built for PlayStation 5 that we're hoping that we're going to get our hands on. Um, just because I feel like everyone who has a PlayStation 5, the few that do, that's the main mm -hmm. hurdle they're having with right now, really experiencing a game that's going to utilize everything um, that the console has. And although well, we do have Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, yeah but right well, that's true. We have that, too. Ratchet and Clank just won't hit for everybody. It won't hit for everybody. Right. Yeah, yeah, this is going to yeah, be yeah, like, yeah. you know, not necessarily on the scale of God of War, but hitting more of that audience that's mm -hmm. looking for open a world. more mature mm -hmm. open yeah. world game. What we know yeah. from PlayStation exclusives. Um, so right. my bad, Ratchet and Clank. I'm actually really excited for you as well. It's all good. It's all good. Um, so <laughs> let's get into it because this gameplay, firstly, I want to say I applaud State of Play all the time because they don't. They don't care about the BS, okay? They're like, hi, we're here for Horizon Forbidden West. Here's the gameplay. And that's pretty much it. That's so yes. it was yep. a 20-minute yep. um, state of play. And I think it was like four minutes and like 30 seconds or so was just extra stuff. And the rest yeah. was mm. gameplay, which I loved um, that they do this. So they kind of pick up here with the story. You know, we're with Aloy again. And there's this crimson blight that is hitting her world and it's killing off creatures um people and it's up to her as our hero to figure out what's going on and save the world and she we saw specific gameplay with her and her friend errand not aaron Aaron. yeah, yeah. <laughs> i've made the same mistake i know i, I was like oh it's Aaron. Aaron. <laughs> weird name but you know we're not here to judge um and from this gameplay, um, you know, I think throughout the day, we're going to be more on a discussion base than me just presenting what we saw, because it's really just mm -hmm. what we thought, our reactions to um, the state of play. But through it, we saw a lot of combat mechanics. Um, we see her with her. She has kind of like um, I forgot what they call it, but it's like a string like a long shot everything yeah. i'm gonna say is a reference to zelda because this gameplay reminded me of zelda so it's kind of like a long shot um where she could kind of traverse anywhere that's open world it highlights the areas that she could kind of zip to um yeah. we saw her going more vertical we saw a little mm -hmm. under underwater yeah. area so i want to know from you guys firstly heading into this state of play and then seeing it what was the most exciting thing that you saw? And Raggio, hi, I see you. I think uh, I think kind of what you were talking about there, and it's something that I'm wanting a little more out of open world games to come, like in the future, and it's that level of having the verticality mm -hmm. underwater, being able to explore more than just what is the open world in front of you. Yes. You know, I think that it's really cool that she goes underwater and you see kind of the sea creatures and the and what's down there. And as well, even just having like the robotic creatures being in the water too. I think that creates a new threat and a nice little like fun element to the game. The verticality also is great, being able to climb up things, zip to things, that little like 
hologram like umbrella that she was using essentially <laughs> yeah, to like glide glider. around. The shield that was cool. they call it that one that's the shield wing and then I just looked it up. Pullcaster mm. was that okay. the little pulley thing uh that I'll have to using. get used to the names. I know, but, yeah. I like long shot more, but yeah. I'm pretty, yeah. <laughs> I think that's it's better. Cool. Um but it's cool. Like I I like that kind of stuff. You know, it's stuff like that as well when I play like games like Spider Man that I have a lot of mm-hmm. fun with, being able to climb tall skyscrapers or things like that. You know, it's a lot of fun to have that level of verticality or exploration that's just more than the ground level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's Yeah, I think Sorry, go ahead. Th- that's one thing that really stood out for me throughout this. Um, mm-hmm. When you're looking at the the first game, it, it was fun, um, but there wasn't a lot of verticality um, yeah. in that game. There wasn't a lot of like you feeling like you could explore all these different things in the environment. Like seeing you a mountain and being like, oh my God, I can go, go there. there. You know? Yeah, which yeah. sounds a little like another game, but we'll talk to that comparison a, a little later <laughs> because I think you guys know what game I'm talking about. Steve, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, going into this, I was already at, like, a 9 or a 10. Like, mm-hmm. Horizon Zero Dawn was such a such a great leap away from, like, what Guerrilla Games is used to doing. So when I came into that game, I was really blown away, especially by the story. I think that game had a really original, captivating story altogether. And kind of coming into Forbidden West, I was like, I I can't wait to see where Aloy goes and see like what is really uh, the compelling story here. And one of the things that really stuck out to me was seeing like these these tribes and them being able to override the, the mechanical creatures. Yeah. It was really cool because in in the first one, Aloy was able to do that temporarily, just for yeah. just to ride them and use them for like combat on occasion. But y- you saw like the tribes being able to to ride them, but also to uh, override them to a capacity where they could put war paint on them. So mm-hmm. I, I I just I just really like that style, and that's that's really captivating to me. The story above all else is what's pulling me in. So seeing seeing Aloy again and where the story takes place, being in San Francisco, you see like the Golden Gate Bridge and all that. So that, cool. That's really cool. And so then you good, see like yeah. the um, holographic map. I, I don't really know how to really explain it, but it kind of shows that there might be going to, it might be going to like LA or San Diego at some point mm-hmm. in the story as well. I, I love that stuff. I don't know about you, but like when I was playing like The Last of Us Part Two, uh, mm-hmm. very recently after I played it or before I played it, sorry, uh, I went to Seattle for PAX Prime, I guess it's called now, PAX West. I don't know, sure. whatever. Yeah. Uh, I went to Seattle and like getting to see like a post-apocalyptic version of that is so oh, sure. cool. Yeah. I, I live for that kind of stuff. It's really, really cool. You get to see that iconography, but in this world that's run down and, you know, overgrown. I think that stuff is really awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, and especially in cool. something in something like horizon 2 it's really easy to forget that Mm -hmm. like you're in california like this is a it's just a post like a very very post post apocalyptic world and those moments for me when it recaptivates you and puts everything in perspective and scale that's where horizon really gets me because it's like you're going about because horizon one felt a little claustrophobic in its world design um Mm -hmm. to me at least a little bit um and now that it's just like this wide open expanse i'm really excited to see what kind of stuff they took away what little things what little story bits like relics of the old world that they're going to put in as fan Mm -hmm. service and i mean we were talking about this in in the pre-show the environments look so good the lighting the shading just like Mm -hmm. the it just all looks so good yeah yeah Yeah. and this is going to be such a huge title uh for sony especially the ps5 um i'm just i'm really excited i had absolutely no expectations coming into this because horizon wasn't a game that i really fell in love with Mm -hmm. um at the time i was playing god of war um and assassin's creed odyssey or Mm. it was an odyssey or origins at the it was probably an odyssey Odyssey. yeah it was odyssey yeah um so i was really sucked into that but my girlfriend really loved horizon and she it's one of the only games i kid you not one of the only games she's actually finished she gets (laughs) she gets frustrated and gives up on games really easy and and watching her experience that world and kind of the glimpses that I got, um, it was just beautiful and something that I think subverted my own expectations uh, from what I thought about it initially. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of the same for me, too, uh, from what you were saying, Malik. You know, like, uh, my girlfriend doesn't play a lot of games, but she played this one. And she's like, you have to. Like, you have to play it. And, like, experiencing it and getting to see it. I, I got it on my PC. I'm glad that it came to PC. Oh, nice. So I got yeah. to see it, like, at its max quality. And it's a pretty looking game. 
Um, and, and I'm sure we're going to expect no less. I mean, we've seen to expect no less from Horizon 2. Yeah. Um, and yeah, the environments. And also, like, another thing that I was really impressed by was, like, the combat. Because that was something that took a little bit of time for me to get used to, was that your bow is kind of your main weapon. That's mm -hmm. what you want to really rely on. Because I'm a big fan of, like, the hand-to-hand -hand combat and stuff. And it looks like that's got a bit of an upgrade in the second game. Yeah. So that's yeah. a lot of fun, and I'm really excited about that. And also, I don't know about you guys, I am super down for the, the in-game cinematics that look anime as hell. Yes. Yes. Loading yeah. up the spear and like spiking it into the ground. I think that stuff is so cool. It's one of my like favorite things. About like it's almost fata fatality yes. yes, right? Yes. Like it's yeah. so cool. And um, yeah, you're, you're talking about like upgraded combat and that's part of what really captivates me about this is that the yeah. melee combat looks way better in this game than it did yeah. in the first one. Because that, that I think was like one of the, the sore points of... Um, Zero. Um, first game. Yeah. Yeah. The first game was that the melee combat just wasn't that fun. You were just kind of hitting them. You weren't really getting that reaction from the enemies and yeah. stuff like that. Here, it seems like they're going like full, full impact with that. And like, like yeah. you were saying, that almost anime esque uh, cinematic. And, and that they do the similar thing in Spider Man as well. And no matter how many times I see that, yes. it's so much fun. So that's what that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to bring up. The special takedowns and yeah. stuff. And doing the the camera angles and the zoom ins mm -hmm. and all that getting to see the characters facial expressions that kind of stuff like i'm all in on that i hope we get a ton of that in yeah this game. like you're gonna yeah, see it in I this b-roll right now like that we're showing with this boss battle uh with what i don't even know what this is it's kind of like like an elephant a something like yeah a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah they, they called yeah. it a tremor tusk yes yeah, tremor tusk was... yeah so it's gonna be Interesting because you have to use so many different combinations of weapons. So you see like mm -hmm. she's using her spear there. Obviously she can't, um, her arrows aren't strong enough to actually penetrate first. Then when she gets the shield off of uh, the tremor tusk, she's able to use her arrows. So it's mm -hmm. cool that it's gonna yeah. be able to expand like all the tools and mechanics that she has now that we're seeing through this gameplay is gonna expand how we actually interact with enemies throughout the game. Like that's amazing. It, and it's giving me like we're remembering Spider-Man, you know, those cinematic takedowns. But I'm gonna yeah. say, you know, my favorite Breath of the Wild, like, her with this bow is very much Breath of the Wild-esque. You know, yeah. when she's jumping down and she's using her bow earlier in this gameplay, like, mm -hmm. they slowed it down. It's, it's, it's You could see the inspirations just coming from that game. Yeah, and yeah. I will say the one thing that I will... Sorry, I'll let no, you finish no, in a second because this is just a quick thing. The one thing that I will never, ever be able to get over with Horizon that it, I hate myself for it, but just seeing the arrows shot at these mechanical dinosaurs makes me cringe. Every <laughs> time, I'm sorry. It's just like watching her shoot the wood arrows and watching them like flake off of the dinosaurs in the beginning. I'm like, why are you even trying? What are you doing? Like, use a shock arrow. Use something. Yeah. Like, you're not useless anymore. I'm like, you know, you have all these like great like skills and utilities and things that you can use like don't shoot wood arrows that's my yeah. only that's my only qualm with horizon <laughs> that's actually a really funny point like yeah. you've gone through the this 50 hour campaign in the first game where she's learning and using like all these different uh you know arrows and and weapons and everything and then you see the next trailer is like back to basics i guess <laughs> that's, that's yeah. always something that i wonder if like they they take into a factor with like sequels to games like i, I wonder this for when we get like an inevitable sequel to spider-man right yeah mm -hmm. are these characters going to start out with everything that that we got to upgrade them with from right. the previous game you know because otherwise it just feels weird and inconsistent you yeah. know like it's just that that's why i wonder if we're going to go into horizon 2 almost stripped away of everything that we would have gotten and upgraded from the first game i know that everyone's kind of skill trees are different and their upgrades are always going to be different right but i wonder if some of like the the key points are going to stay there yeah you know? yeah i feel like you know it's, it's that video game logic where they're like aloy had to travel across across yeah, the country she lost she own, yeah exactly or she could only bring so yeah. much because you know mm. she doesn't have a card it's like okay but i get she it has it's a like video five game different gadgets just tucked yeah. away exactly. in her yeah. pouch yeah. um no yeah it, that's always something interesting because video games does struggle with explaining that but that's the beauty of like gamers we just kind of overlook that if the gameplay is good enough right that's true um and but honestly, i look at i look at something like the arkham games right yeah, like yeah. arkham mm -hmm. asylum it was so bare bones and then arkham city they started to give you some really cool upgrades and then arkham knight has like a whole weapon wheel of stuff mm -hmm. to yeah. choose from you know but so i, I wonder think... i mean you could see that too in horizon 2 right that little yes. weapon wheel 
Yes, yeah. and Which they're, looks out, clean. they're also saying mm-hmm. too there's going to be workbenches, right? So we're going to yeah. see how that's going to work in. But I think with what you're saying, Aaron, is like we're that's a that's a franchise that they knew they were coming out with multiple games right like when horizon zero dawn came out i'm pretty sure they're like we're gonna have to see how this goes right Uh, before they actually commit to a second game because it's a new ip right Mm -hmm. um so you want to put everything in that first game to show the potential so because if it was too bare bones i feel like players wouldn't be able to resonate with it or would just kind of not give it the credit it it yeah. deserves um yeah. just because there isn't too much to do in terms of weaponry but yeah like i i just want to say like with this too um this gameplay has also spurred a lot of controversy because of how aloy looks um so you know when you mm. look to previous designs of aloy well in the first game her chin is a little bit slimmer, goes in more, uh, her cheeks kind of go in more to the chin, where she's mm-hmm. much fuller in the lower part of her face. And I think a lot of people, or a lot of people who are complaining about this, doesn't right. like that design. I think that's trash. Um, she looks fine. We I think these so people got to meet some more women. <laughs> I think. I think, if you, I think if you have a problem, and uh, we've all seen like that comparison tweet and with the yeah. with the other one, whatever. If you actually have a, like a problem with how she looks in the game, that's a you problem. Yes. I, 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 Developers don't have to, you know, appease to you. Well, get over it. This, this a, whole it's a conversation minor. is start. It's starting to get so dumb, it you know. So like, and, and I remember the perfect co- comparison to this. I saw somebody tweet out the the like two of the three main protagonists from GTA Five being like Michael sure. and Trevor, being like, "Oh yeah, this is like the ideal male, huh?" Like, <laughs> right. was anybody complaining about this ten years ago? Like, it's just come on. It's the post apocalypse like there is nothing left <laughs> well there doesn't even need to be like a logical reasoning behind it it's i know just, it's deal just, with it it's dumb it's just dumb that there's even like a conversation yeah. around it because like come on like yeah just well, just well, and the thing, go outside <laughs> like you know sorry the thing is too, yeah. is like developers have and, it, and this is like a common thing it is much harder to develop fluid and and like authentic looking female models than it is male models it is just generally easier to make male models because there's mm-hmm. some less physics and then there's also a lot more assets and people have more practice with it like it's just there's not like this big emphasis on making female models not just realistic but varied yeah. um and I, mm-hmm. I like that we're getting variety to like the female figure you know like it's just something that's nice that like we like you said with gta 5 we got variety there like it, we need this in all games and i don't think it's even a thing it's not even a discussion of accessibility or inclusivity it's just about artists being able to make their art like at the end of the day like they Mm -hmm. should be able to make their art and their character and people can deal with it like if they don't like how they look don't play the game but guess what all the people complaining are probably still going to play the game anyways Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, we're all going to throw our money to this game because the gameplay looks amazing oh my god look at the lighting there anyways the lighting looks good too (laughs) um but i feel like with this because you know another playstation exclusive kind of stirred up controversy over a change in design spider-man right um with um spider-man yeah with peter parker right the difference here is literally Aloy looks more real to me as a person um, yep. than she mm-hmm. did before. It's yep. not a drastic change. It's not like she's, you know, a brunette now <laughs> with short mm-hmm. hair. Um, whereas with Peter Parker, I think that was more of a drastic change because it yeah. was the complete different uh, well, face yeah, model. They had to do the whole recast because they wanted yes. to have an actor that fit more of like the, the facial age. structure and, yeah. of the voice actor. And he's the one who, like the voice actor, Yuri Lowenthal, he's the one who does the mocap for the character. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they wanted to get someone that like matched that more so that just the facial animations and everything could be more lined up. Yeah. And it's Um, easier for them when they're um, going over and doing gameplay for Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, it might have even been something, a decision that was made to help kind of speed up the process of making the next Spider-Man game. Yeah. 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 Another cool point with this, because I was just blown away by the lighting as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Like you're really seeing that photorealism uh, come into play with how that is utilized on the PlayStation 5. I was really excited about that. How about you guys? Yeah, absolutely. Just like 
D- there's one shot, and I think it's even the one where the you know you. S- uh, I was gonna say the one where she like climbs up like a rock or something, and you see the the Golden Gate Bridge in the background and stuff yes, like that. Just yeah. the way the lighting comes in, and you see like the foreground mixed with the background, all the lighting, all the shadows, it, it looked unreal. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Steve. Sorry. No, I was just gonna say like throughout this whole thing, and especially like in the underwater sections, it looked absolutely beautiful and gorgeous. At the end of the day, like I'm still shocked that this is a game that's gonna run on PlayStation Four. <laughs> That just blows my mind that yeah. I, I can't imagine if you're running like a base day one PS4, this thing's not going to blow up and set your house on fire. <laughs> like get house insurance, get a fire extinguisher ready yeah. next to you. Like I can't imagine this thing's going to sound like a jet engine going off. Like yeah. seriously, it, I, I, I it's one of the most if, beautiful games I've seen. I wonder if it'll top the last of us part two. Cause the last of us yeah. part two, mm-hmm. like it pushed the PlayStation four to its absolute limits. Mm-hmm. And I mean, so far from what we've seen, although it, it was the PS5 gameplay, right? Yes, it was right. PC. Um, I, I do yeah. wonder what it's going to look like on the PS4. And I wonder if this will be that new benchmark or that new mm. kind of pushing of the limit. For I feel console. like it. I feel like I, I don't think so. I really do feel like it's going to be a big downgrade. It, it's I do think it's going to be a big downgrade it, just because mm. now I told you guys when I was watching the stream, it was a little bit choppy for me i think it was just my mm-hmm. stream um, i was watching yeah. it live i know some of you mm. waited till uh, the stream ended to watch it in complete like 1080 um yeah. but how aloy's hair moves and i you know i i notice hair because hair is such a hard thing for developers yeah. Yeah. to animate it's a little choppy just a little bit um you know you, you kind of her hair's just kind of going without any direction or wind like it seems like the environment the wind is going one way and her hair is kind of going the opposite Mm -hmm. way um and for me when i see things like that and this is game like playstation 5 uh, gameplay i just don't have high hopes um for the playstation 4 version which i i think that's expected right like they went into developing this for playstation 5 um Mm -hmm. so i feel like for the last of us part two that was developed specifically on playstation 4 um so i feel like it it's you know horizon forbidden west is not going to be able to match that capability on the floor because it's it's going to be downgraded from playstation 5 Mm. sure i I see that happening to be the the person to nitpick it but yeah her hair kind of bugged me and like (laughs) one of the little things too that i don't get why developers like don't do more often because there's a few games that do it and do it well why does her hair still clip through her bow we are on the playstation mm-hmm. 5 if you like yeah. those, should be, those should be two physical objects that collide and not just pass through each other like i'm not a game developer but i know that you can make hair interact with her bow on her mm-hmm. back and it's like little details like that uh, like you're saying camille that's what truly makes it like a playstation 5 right. a next gen game and mm-hmm. honestly at this point i know there's not a lot of playstations out in the wild but i am completely okay with first party studios only developing for the f- ps5 if it mm. means that we get the the best the gaming experience, experience that we've yeah. ever had mm-hmm. i yeah. am okay with that and i but i don't think that the general population is and yeah one thing that i wanted to bring up too because you guys are talking um just about like stories and like how hard do you go in putting you know going all in on the first one Games like Mass, I believe Mass Effect had it, and then Dragon Age Origins. The ability of having your decisions in the first and previous games mm-hmm. affect the story going into the second one, that's something that I would like to see come from more first party studios because we know that Sony is focused on those, you know, those third person story experiences that just, you know, probably are going to have longevity to them. And having your unique interactions that you do and those decisions that you make in previous games is only going to make the kind of story experience that we get from Sony uh, even better. But the story of Horizon is something that I think not a lot of people expected to take them in. I think a lot of people expected gimmicks of the dinosaurs, um, Mm -hmm. and they got caught off guard by the story, which is what makes it so incredible, which is why I think that now they need to focus on getting Horizon up to a level where, you know, the combat's revamped, it looks way better than it ever has, and it's providing a unique experience because it's gonna it's gonna go on PC again. We mm-hmm. we know that Horizon Forbidden West is probably gonna go on PC. I think they only have a timed exclusive for it. Um or they haven't announced they haven't it. Said it was anything announced, about it. Yeah. 
How long was it after the first Horizon that they released it on PC? Oh, four it was four years. Like two, three was years. it? Yeah. It came out 2017. Yeah, it, it came out 2017. It came in 2020, 20, I believe. 2020. Okay, so like, 2021. Or 2021, yeah. yeah so three or four years. Yeah. Three or four years. So, I mean, we know that it's probably going to be coming to PC, probably not going to be coming to Xbox. But mm. no. <laughs> if, if they just focus on that high quality, you can push the game even farther on PC mm. than you can oh, on yeah. PS5. And if you're not worried about, you know, being making it accessible for PS4, I think that the game could do even better. That I know a lot of people don't like that, but I think that we should start focusing towards like the next generation and just getting the best games possible. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think, think it's something fair. what we talked about previously um, when we we're trying to put our predictions on what we're going to see coming out this year. It really depends on how this pandemic and um, how manufacturers recover from this pandemic and are able to mm -hmm. actually push out consoles yep. right um yep. i do think obviously that th when you have a new console usually by year two of the console you want to have some decent games out um that are specific and utilizing that console's technology right um but mm -hmm. obviously the pandemic has delayed things but you're right like like i think it is a uh, time to focus on that and i feel like if you're playing games for amazing graphics then you usually are going to be that gamer that has, you know, the most up to date graphics card on your PC, right? Or has the latest gen console, right? If that's not important to you, which for me, I love graphics. I don't want it to take away from how I'm, you know, interacting with the story. I love playing games for their story, but it's not the end all be all. Like I know I nitpicked about her hair. That was just something I noticed. I want to see the gameplay like if I'm getting more vertical options and traversing through this gameplay with Horizon Forbidden West, that's going to entertain me more because there's more to do within the game. Um, yeah. And I, I think that's what's important, whatever you're developing, if it's a game for past gen or this gen. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's just my little two cents on that. Now, before we move on, I want to ask the question is the elephant in the room. Is this game a 2021 game? Yes, because it's going to buy them time for God of War and whatever else they have coming out. It's I will say I'm I'm surprised they didn't announce a release right? date. Uh, I thought that that was weird. Yeah. Um, but I I I have confidence that it's yeah. still coming out this year. I'm with you, uh, Aaron. I'm surprised that they didn't announce a release date just because you know we're almost halfway through um, the year. And this is slated for 2021. I think mm -hmm. that may have to do with the pandemic, maybe some delays that are happening with the studios, some tweaks that they're seeing there. Yeah. But I feel like if they were planning on delaying it, they would have put an announcement in that video. Mm hmm. That yeah, it's it it's they're habit, they're though. pushing it back because the gameplay I think was, we heard was before yes, the game exactly sure. they would have said you know we're spending a little bit more time with the game yeah. so it's going to come out you know early 2022 um, I think now if they were to announce a delay after showing that gameplay that kind of that's shooting them in the foot I think maybe mm -hmm. they're waiting for around E3 to release release dates for this. Which I think is fair. I think, like, I'm kind of 50-50 on it, um, only because, I mean, as we've seen, I mean, last year, Naughty Dog did their big Last of Us 2 gameplay, and two weeks later, they're like, oh, yeah, it's delayed. <laughs> and, yeah. all, that was a weird circumstance. Which was really weird. Was going on with the last For sure, and, yeah. and that's most likely, you know, like, co due to COVID and, and development uh delays and all that but yeah i just find it really weird that they held this you know pretty in-depth gameplay showcase and they didn't say anything they yeah. in the playstation blog post they're like yeah development's on track we'll talk to you guys later kind of thing yeah. but even even if they didn't want to give a date they could have at least said we're really excited for you guys to get hands-on with this game later later 20 yeah and then I, I i was looking at it like historically playstation never releases games in q4 like yeah. ever, unless it's a console release, uh, which we've seen, you know, just this past year with uh, like Miles, Miles Morales, Morales, Dark Souls, stuff like that. So that really either leaves like August or September. September, you got Deathloop. I don't know if you really want to cannibalize you know, like your own PlayStation exclusive with another exclusive. August seems a little too early, in my opinion. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, like I was going to bring that up. God of War, Last of Us 2 and Ghost of Tsushima were all like mid, like early summer to late summer yeah. games. Um, well, the yeah. Spider-Man games were quarter four, though. 
Yeah, but then well, they, they, came out with, was... they came out with limited edition consoles, though, with it. And I don't yeah, think so. we're going to get, especially because of manufacturing issues, we're not getting a, a black version of the PlayStation no. 5 no. this year, although that hurts my heart to say. Um, so, yeah, you bring up a really good point, Steve and Raj, in chat. I think that's why, you know, Steve posed that question is because... It's just very uncharacteristic of PlayStation mm. not to announce a release date. Or they may do the, you know, like when they announced God of War Ragnarok, like we didn't know we were going to see anything of God of War, right? We just, right. We, it just kind of came out and then there was a year attached to that, right? Mm -hmm. So they may do something where it's like E3, they show more gameplay of it, more trailer, maybe the workbench stuff. And yeah. then release date alongside of that. Because it's also yeah. a weird timing for a state of play when we know E3 is just around the corner. Right? That seems weird. Like, we're still waiting for Ratchet and Clank as well. It was just weird overall. And to not give a release date kind of felt like, why now? Why of all times did you want to show this game off right now? I don't know. Has it been confirmed for the E3 press conference yet? No. I don't. They're they're right? definitely not they at E3. They're not yeah. at E3. Yeah. But they could they could do something like Nintendo where they're not at E3, but at E3, you know, yeah. Yeah. Season, yeah. you know. I mean, yeah, I they they could come out with a big surprise and be like, hey, yeah. guess what? This is our announcement. Like the announcement could just be this is the date you're getting it. Done. Yeah. 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 Uh, Raj brings up a good. <laughs> good point in chat you know they want us to pre-order right so there's going to be something exciting you know with when they announce a date so to right. drive those pre-orders so maybe that's what it is they're figuring out what that pre-order bundle will be to announce that date that's a really good point i didn't think about that's that. fair Rise plate. that's what i want <laughs> <With> the... <laughs> but but you know just um just to like come back at, at that point, like if if it, if we're looking at like an August or September date again, isn't it? Isn't right now the time that you pre uh, announce a pre-order and a pre-order bundle? Like at the end of the showcase, they're like, here's here's the Aloy statue. This is when you can start pre-ordering and all that. If you do it like in late June, early July, that kind of seems a little late to me, anyways. Well, when did we get in a date for Ratchet? So when did we get a, a date? Sorry, Aaron, for Ratchet and Clank. No, yeah, because we knew it was March. coming out. Right, and we in February, March. See, that's pretty close if you think that's about true. when that's we're getting true. Ratchet yeah. out, and I that's think that's true. because of the changes in terms of production for because of the pandemic. Sure. Yeah, and same yeah. with Miles. I mean, even just in general, just the reveal and the showcase of the PlayStation Five. It, it was shown in June, and it was coming out in November. You know, and, and, yeah. and even back in June when they showed the PlayStation Five, they weren't even letting us know when. Like, why? Well, actually, did they did they give us the release date then? They I don't didn't think give us they. I don't think date. they gave us the release date. Well, well, Miles had like that holiday. We, 2020. we knew it was holiday twenty twenty, yeah. but we didn't know the the date. The exact day, yeah. So like stuff like that is what I look to as well. And that like yeah, they're gonna give you the big reveal. They're gonna show you what these games look like. Get everybody excited. And then when it's time to give you like a pre-order bundle or pre-order bonuses, yeah. they'll put out another trailer and people will just be excited all over again. That's like fair. I feel like for, for PlayStation, given their track record, given everything that they've done through the last console generation leading into this one, all they have to do is be like, hey, we got a new exclusive. And people are going to be like, okay, yeah, sure. So where do I put <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Like that's, that's just all they got to do nowadays. I think marketing really comes easy for them. Yeah. Um, but like granted, they still got to market in some way. So I guess it's just a matter of when we'll see what those pre-order bonuses will be. I, I Again, I'm still pretty confident the game's coming out this year, but I can see it being delayed as well. Like, I, I wouldn't be shocked. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely you... bring up good points. I think if we don't hear anything about God of War Ragnarok around E3, within a week after E3 concluding, God of War gets pushed back to 2022, and yeah. Horizon is their winter Q4 release. Because... Yep. With with Spider Man, you can you can release that any time you want, and people mm -hmm. are gonna buy it. Spider Man, yep. Ratchet and Clank too, I think is one of those titles that has enough weight behind it that you can get people to buy into that. I feel like Horizon is at that point now where you mm -hmm. can get gaming fans, and PlayStation fans, to buy that game for you know in Q4, even amongst maybe like an Assassin's Creed or these other big titles that come mm -hmm. out. I think, I think that it has that weight behind it now. Yeah. I think I don't think there's there's a chance in hell that god of wars this year see <laughs> not I, a chance. I, I i i want to be hopeful although i i know right like i'm not 
I'm not looking at this as like not reading the room and what's happening in the world and with their releases, but mm. I really hope it's not next year because knowing PlayStation, how they work with their releases, that means we won't see God of War till spring 2022. Exactly. Um, yeah. When they ofi- officially announced for 2021. Mm-hmm. So if they were to make, you know, a console version, a black version of the console, why not do a limited version of God of War and release the game in the holiday 2021? Come on, PlayStation. Let's do that. I don't think it's going to happen. Corey Barlog could come on to the show, look me dead in the <laughs> eyes and say it's a 2021 game. And I say, I don't believe you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how confident I am. Like, yeah. there's no way. I, I will say, though, what do you guys think are the odds? I know we were all talking about like the playstation attending e3 but not really actually being a part of the e3 lineup do you think that they'll do something like a state of play that's going to be like their big e3 showcase and do you think it's going to be either this summer or maybe closer to september kind of like what they did last year i think oh this is tough because what is what is happening with the oh my gosh i can't even remember the playstation event what's um the name state of play or PlayStation Experience, PSX? Yeah, yes, PSX. PSX, right? Like, yeah. do they do something around that time announce Maybe. PSX that would is be back? December. Right? But that's yeah. all the way in December, which just, to me, it's like, then, if they're going to show anything this year, they ha- and if they're announcing God of War is delayed, they have to show something from God of War to kind yeah. of keep yeah. the fans happy, right? So yeah. if they were to do that for the holiday... It wouldn't make sense to do that for PlayStation Experience and more in line with the Video Game Awards. I would see them doing something Mm -hmm. in line for Video Game Awards. So that's why I'm crossing my fingers. They are doing something around E3 time, whether it is going to be after E3 near end of June or maybe even beginning of July. Um, Just because I feel like that then it's their own. Because exactly. there's a lot of questions then if they just put out this announcement that they're delaying God of War and we get a release date for Horizon, if they delay God of War, like I said, spring 2022 is probably the earliest that we'll see that. What is filling that void there? That's a long yeah. time for people who have PlayStations that would now have it for a full year, not okay. having something to play specifically on the PlayStation that's mm-hmm. made for the PlayStation 5. So that's my only questions around that but neither of us work for playstation neither of us knows anything that's happening anyone getting calls from Corey? no no not right now no no i think he's busy uh, I, put, I put my phone on do not disturb he's probably like you know he's probably <laughs> right. spamming my phone but you know I'll check phone, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah trying to help us you break that up. news right <laughs> Brought up the the all black uh, PlayStation Five for God of War in a special edition. Have you guys seen the leaked cover, like the game cover? For no, I try to stay away from. Oh. I try to stay away from leaks if they're not like if we're so far out and we haven't seen yeah. anything from the game, just because mm. at that first reveal, I want to be surprised. Gotcha. Okay. Well, yeah, because the there was an accidental like of what the game cover accidental is gonna leak. look like. Yeah, accidental leak during I think it was uh, like a business conference. Um, and oh, the logo. You mean? Uh, was it just the logo? Because the I think I, you're thinking I, of the logo. I, I, yeah, it was the logo that they just Googled and included it and then removed it. Was, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, people people have been posting like leaks, and I think that with the color scheme of god of war ragnarok with the blue mm. it's just too good to not do a black and blue right? it's it's too convenient for them to not do it now that you yeah. mentioned it i no. mean that so would I be perfect cover, i was looking at the art for it and like what people have leaked so far and it just it's too good not to do i mean but imagine I imagine the runes on the oh. that would be wicked Oh, um, that'd but, be so but cool. to be fair, to be fair, Malik, that that logo was some someone uh, rendered that themselves. Like PlayStation okay, went and okay. Googled that, put it in yep. their pl- presentation. Everyone called them out on. They're like, "Oops, yeah. never mind," and then removed it. Oh, that wasn't no. there, so don't read gotcha. too much. Okay, into it. all right. That yeah, was, that at was... the same time too that they showed something for Spider Man, and it was like a Googled PNG of Miles from like uh, like uh, Ultimate Alliance. Oh, that's like, what it was. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's like, yo, what what are you doing? <laughs> Oh my god, it'd be who, really cool. Who put the if, PowerPoint uh, together and who wasn't like, you know, talking to PlayStation internally for assets? Like what's it'd be, going it'd on? be really cool if, you know, Sony kind of developed a humor about them and like just put this out in right. the world by themselves and like yeah, just trolling yeah. all of this, that'd be really cool.